what's good? What's good, B? Let's get into this, man. We are playing no times, man. I'm going to say a few words to you, and I want to get your initial reaction when I say this to you. M-O-B-B-D-E-P. What does that mean to you, sir? Well, we can call that a GOAT group in hip-hop. I mean, I'm just going to keep it real. You know, when on the old channel, when we did our, um, our top MCs of the 90s, um, your number one of everybody for that decade was Mob D. And um, when we first did the show in 2017, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you was like, yo, let's do this segment where we just give appreciations to MCs that we like. <laughs> the first one was Prodigy. Prodigy was alive because you found two brothers who were just like, Mob Deep meant so much to us. It's like, with everything that was going on in hip hop in the 90s, Mob Deep literally stayed hip hop. They didn't go anywhere else. They did it one way, the hip hop way. Mm. They wasn't trying to cater to this. They wasn't trying to make this sound. They did it one way. And you know, it was it was amazing. So um, um Do you wanna go back to I guess when these brothers were in high school? What is it? Like you you know how this watch you're in high school, you meet somebody, you got interest in hip hop, you like hip hop, I like hip hop. Oh, you rap, I rap. Um 1993, we always talk about years in hip-hop. Obviously, that year was very integral, a big year in hip-hop, right? Were you really into Juvenile Hell, brother, in 1993, though? No. No, I wasn't. And, and, that, and, that, and that's one of the reasons what made the second album so monumental, because it's the same thing that happened with Tribe. The leaps, the leap that Tribe made from people it's to the low end theory... Yes. It's just it was it was monumental, and the leap that Mob Deep made from juvenile hell to the infamous was mind boggling. It was staggering to the what? point where let's be honest, you and I did play. We played peer pressure. We played hit it from the back. I don't know if you need to add a pause to that. I don't know these young people would pause that song right now in 2022, brother. But like you said, and I love the tribe analogy you used though because. You like people in single lives more than I do, right? Uh, but obviously, by the infamous, this is when they took off. And do you think they felt they was lost in the sauce after juvenile hell? No, I didn't think they. I didn't think they were lost in the sauce because in '94 they started dropping some singles and they dropped the original shook ones. And that was dope. Mm -hmm. You know, you got some people, some quote-unquote boom bad pets, they're like, oh, the original version of Shook Ones is better than the Shook Ones Part 2. Nonsense. 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 Yeah. The Shook Ones Part 2 is arguably the greatest hip-hop song ever. Okay? Arguably. I put Matter of fact, I would put that against any hip-hop song in the 90s. I would put Shook Ones Part 2 against any hip-hop song in the decade of the 90s, and I will feel very confident that I win that battle. And I don't think nobody would dispute that with you, though, brother. I don't think you have too many people. Yeah, you got people. You got people that say Cream is better. You got people that say T. Roy, Trouble, the uh, Troy is better. You know what I'm saying? You got people that say Ain't Number the G thing is better. Yeah, there's a lot of songs. But the point I'm making is, Shook ones goes goes head up with anything. Rock you in your face, stab you in your rock you in your face, stab your brain with your nose bone. I mean, I'm only 19, but my mind is old. Like, fam, shook ones. When you first heard that, how long did I stay in your rotation for that for that year? Well, being that shook ones was out in '94, late '94, huh? it basically stayed in my rotation all of the end of '94, mm -hmm. all of uh, early '95, going into the album when the album dropped, mm -hmm. and then um, dogs. <laughs> That infamous album, you, we, like, we can argue all day, infamous, purple tape, illmatic, ready to die, reasonable yes. doubt. Yes, you can. That's going to come down to preference, but I'm going to keep it real. Infamous, man. <laughs> so, listen, I got the infamous right there with, with, with um, Black Moon. Ready to die. I got it with all those. Nine. Dog, it's not even, I, it's not, sometimes it's not even right there. Sometimes it sounds better. Like I'm just going, I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it a step further. Mm. Sometimes it just sounds, and and the continuity between half and, and, and P was so ill, man. 
You know what I'm saying? And, and let's go into Havoc Production right quick, man. I think you and I are big, big uh, supporters of Havoc Production. Where do you put Havoc for you? I know we can talk RZA, Dre, all these other brothers and stuff, but where do you put Havoc at, though? Havoc is in my top five producers of uh, all time, top five. Mm -hmm. um, I rate him over Della. I rate him over... Oh, yeah, right. I do. Right, I do. I know people right. just have a hard time hearing that, but it's just right. I do because Havoc's impact and his production. Um, I don't. I don't like the fact that Havoc does not get flowers the way people give flowers to Pete Rock and DJ Premier. They treat him like he doesn't deserve to be talked about like they are because he didn't get into the production game hard body until like ninety four, ninety five. You know what I'm saying? You no, know, because I feel like Havoc is one of the top. Two dudes, top three, maybe the best hip hop producer of all time. He's, he's, top, he's definitely top three and for me. I feel the same way. But a lot of people never put his name into those categories. I'm just like, what do y'all think he don't dig? Like, how do you think he gets these samples? How do you think he makes these beats? He does everything every other great producer. He digs in the crates, he finds samples, he cuts, he mixes, he does all of that. But yet, for some reason, they don't look at him like that. Recently, you had told me a couple weeks ago that it was something that Hav did. Um, I think it was like FG, right? Yeah. It was a Biggie that was celebrating a Biggie dinner. Right. And Havoc was there, and he was with Little C's and Little Kim. And he performed word for word, bar for bar, Last Days, a song that he produced, but he rapped Biggie's verse. That was one of the most realest hip-hop things I've ever seen. Like, I mean, he just wrapped it. Right. And you know, that's that's one of the best songs on Life After Death, by the way. People don't know that. That's one of the best songs on Life After Death. Uh -huh. Last uh -huh. Days. Uh -huh. You know. That's a fact. Well, uh, but uh, I think Havoc is, um, I think Havoc's one of the all-time greatest producers. And, and as long as me and you are here, we always going to talk about it and let people know that we have him with anybody y'all listen to. Mm -hmm. Can we go back to the infamous right quick and say, let's be honest, man, there's not one song, probably one song, if I'm going to nitpick, I can go party, party over there. It's probably not the best song on the album, but that's just me nitpicking, though, right? Would you agree with that, though? Storytelling, ice pick talking, like, they gave us... So let me tell you what I learned. Let me tell you what I learned, because I be posting albums on, uh, on, on Twitter, and I be asking people's opinion, right? Right. I had no idea how many people loved Temperatures Rising. Did you know that? Oh, I, could, you, I didn't know that, though, but I'm not surprised, though. I'm not surprised. That story I'm, su I'm surprised because is Temperature Rising a top five song on the infamous? All right. You got 40 See, this, this is why it threw me off. In the, at first, 41st, 41st shot ending the first song. <laughs> Survival of the Fit. I Yo, my man, it, it yeah. don't crack the top five. Cradle to, cradle to the Grave, Q, 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 Hectic, up north, up north Trip. I didn't like Up North Trip too much. Give Up the Goods. Drink Away. That's what I'm saying, dogs. It's not a top five song on the album. And yet, a lot of feedback I was getting on social media was Temperature Rising. It's like the most incredible song on the album. And I was like, so it's always interesting to see how other people hear an album and view it. Because I did not realize how much people love Temperature Rising. I would love to know the reason why, the, why they love Temperature Rising. Is it the story? That P and Hadler giving us about Killer Black and everything like that, and is it the hook with Shorty singing or the beat or is it everything? It, it, it must be everything, I guess. In my mindset, I'm just into when they just in murder music, mob talk. That 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 that's that, they're the best at it in history of rap. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah. See, see, I'm telling you, I'm you like yo. How could you make a statement like that? Does the mob do, do they? Do they not get enough props on the aspect of storytelling? They do not get props for that. I mean, they they t they hood stories. I mean, Havoc Havoc's hood stories. Oh. I mean, he, he painted that picture. Trice Life is the most vivid picture when Prodigy talking about the these cats. Yo, that whole yo piece verse on there is crazy, 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 man. Eye for an eye, collaboration wise, where do you break that at them? I rank I for Nine as one of the greatest collaborations in um in hip hop history. Um, okay. I, when I, I saw I, 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 
so take a take a modern day song with the with the best rappers of today's current generation. Right. And you take a song like Swagger Like Us, right? Swagger Like Us is the can't even be anywhere near I for an eye. It it just you know, and let me just say this. When Prodigy says or Jewel like Liberace, it's just one of the hardest the yeah. way you said that. Mm -hmm. Just and everybody got busy and, and let's be clear. We did not know how ill Ray and Ghost was going to be as a duo. The uh, iPhone I was a preview. Yes, yes it was. Because we didn't know. We did not know there was going to be this Ray and Ghost combo that was about to drop later we, on. And just... Who well, They had Ray and Ghost on two songs now. On You're right. You know what I mean? You're right. And, and basically, that set us up for Cuban links. Good point. Because we didn't know. Good point. Good point. We, we didn't know because we in our mind we like yo why is Van Ghost on on two songs on this? I'm like how'd that happen? Are we saying the mall plays a big part? <laughs> yeah, okay. like yeah. That. Yo, yo, think about it. Like we that. knew Van Ghost and they on this album. And we just like oh word. Yeah, word. So are we in agreement? This is more than five mics though. The infamous though. Like are we just in agreement though? Like, Listen, I'm I'm someone who tells everybody this. The infamous got more love than Illmatic in the streets of New York. No. Oh, and, and when I tell people that, it's hard for them to understand it because Illmatic is more revered. But is it, though? Wait a minute. I'm like, like, is it based on the way the infamous was? I mean, let's be real. Diddy is out there with them. Like, we all knew how great the infamous I was. Did he, did he being in the Survival of the Fittest video was kind of weird a little bit, though? I don't well, know, but it just goes to show you. Like, how did he get in the Survival of the Fittest video? That was just, you know what I mean? But, but it just goes to show you how when they was making this movement, when they was making that music, just from a New York City tri-state right. perspective, everybody was paying attention. Mm -hmm. And like, yo, these dudes is putting out incredible hip-hop. Mm -hmm. Cause let's be honest, you know, I always talk about brothers who have um, that three album run. The Red Man's of the World, the EP of Needs of the World. Mark D definitely has that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you talk about that three. I just want to do a quick sidebar because we're doing a Mob Deep appreciation. I'm going to do a quick sidebar. Yes, sir. I've been doing a lot of listening to EPMD, brother. Talk to a me. lot. We should appreciate you. And, ah, we're going to do a lot. And, and, and I'm just going to say, man, oh, man. They basically, I like that mapped out the next 20 years of hip-hop if you listen to them first four albums mm -hmm. like incredible stuff going on but yeah um going into so let's be honest we're talking 95 right now with the infamous right fast forward a year later they give us hell on earth though like to go and, and the, the sound is, can we just talk about the sound difference between the infamous and how dark hell on earth was though well one of the things about uh infamous is a lot of people when I when I talk about how great the infamous is, right? I have a lot of people on social media try to hit me with um Q tip played a large part in that album. And they and a lot of people are trying to give Q tip a lot of the credit for that album. I like I, I fight back against that because they basically want to be like they act like YouTube ghost produced like every song and just stood stood by while Havoc did it. It was like, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. I'm not going to take any credit, but here's Drink Away the Pain. You know, and, and but, but, so... Let me, let me give you a pushback. Watch. Would it surprise you, though, if Q-Tip might have gave, tip, gave Havoc a few pointers here and there? No, no. I, I, I believe Q-Tip was watching these brothers. Right. They, I mean, you got to understand something. By 94... Q-Tip had already dropped three mind-blowing albums, so he was already looked at like a superhero to everybody. Mm. So yeah, if Q-Tip wants to come in the studio, you're going to be like, yeah, show me how to whatever. So, But I don't like the way that people try to act like the sound of the infamous is Q-Tip's sound. Yeah. I, 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 you know I, what I'm saying? I, I, that's that. That's, I mean, listen, Drink Away the Pain, that's playing a big part. No, that. That, yeah, that, yeah, produced by Q-Tip. Okay. All right, but Q-Tip did not produce Shook Ones. No, he did not. Drop He's them. never said it. There's never been anything. So we're going to stop that. You know what I'm saying? Have is a all-time great producer. Now, when we get to Hell on Earth. No, do, do you think people, if, if somebody tells you what, I got Hell on Earth over the infamous, are they trying to be the smartest guy in the room by saying that? Or, or there's some credence. 
they, they can give you credence behind that, though. I can understand them saying that because Hell on Earth is is the most murderous, rawest, darkest, sinister hip hop album you could ever make. Mm -hmm. Have had the violins, he had the pianos, mm -hmm. he had the boom bap, mm -hmm. and the and the and and like he said, we was all in a dark place in our life. People was dying, mm -hmm. like it was like their reality during that time was just death, right, and violence. Mm. Five like album, say, say the least. To go back to back, I mean, they might be the they might be they might be on 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 six mic run with their albums. We, five mics is just the most we could give them, right? Right. But I would like to give them more than that. If there's if there's more mics you can give, Animal Instincts, Extortion, More Trife Life. Um, what's the word? yo yo. What about the storytelling on more trife life? Yeah, that's have that's have solo, right? That's have going solo. <laughs> more trife life, ball, right, right, right. I did like that though. I did like that though. I love the dark sign of having to get Hell on Earth, Godfather Part Three, G O D for the Part Three, Q B C sip lime Picardy. Every on the red side. dog. And then I go to drop a gem on them. Where do we rank drop a gem? R I P Tupac, of course. But where do we rank? Because you know it's funny when you when you see interviews now, right? Half says a lot of times it's really P that we push the envelope on certain conversations that they would have. Because let's be honest, all respect to half, but I thought P took the baton and really got at Bob. You know what I mean? Drop a gem on him is one of the all time greatest um diss songs, and I will take it a step further. Drop a gem is a better diss song than hit him up. <laughs> Why, wait, 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 don't, don't laugh. I'm telling you. I wish drop you, a gem. I'm just drop a gem. The drop a gem is, is a better hip hop diss song than hit him up. And that's not, and to me, it's not even close. 60 G's worth of gun clapping. That's what we do. <laughs> you probably I'm scream I'm louder than the opera. The mob got you. Now you want to use the mob as a crutch, but you think you can't get touched again. Yo, man, this was some serious. And here's the thing, and I want everybody to know this. Um, R.I.P. to Pac and, and, and Pac G. But remember, on Hit Him Up, Pac called Mob Deep out. Yes, big yeah. He called them out. Mob Deep, F you too. That's what he said. So Stop. guess what? They have something for that. Sidebar. I'm gonna be honest with you. You know who got you know who got apology the most though. Who? I thought Joe Budden got that beat hard though. On blood. Yo, let me just say something, man. I <laughs> saw that blood. Yo, 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 let me tell you something. Nah, son. I that got blood. You talking about blood in the blood in the uh? Blood on the wall. Blood on the wall. Yo, so let me just say this. Let me just say about that song. Don't worry about me. Worry about your Medicaid, dog. Hey, let me look. So let me just say this about blood on the wall, and this is a reality about that song. I don't know anybody who heard it besides me and you. <laughs> I'm taking don't it there. That. Don't do that. Yo, no, it's a don't fact, man. Don't do that. Nah, because I don't saw you. That. I saw you talking about that blood on the wall, and I'm like, you really talking about that song? Fam, we're gonna do a show on diss tracks. We did it. We did it on audio. We're gonna do one live this year. I, that's gonna be on my list, dogs. I gotta. That and Papoos. Hold on. When Papoos, listen, Papoos. I know you and Fat Joe are cool, but that diss track you got a Fat Joe is crazy. Well, we'll talk about that another day, though. Yeah, blood on the wall is fire, but he got it. He got that Pete, though, man. Yeah, no, no, no. Guess what? He did. He did get that Pete. When I think great, this song, that song don't even don't register, man. Sir, remember, remember what I said? I thought he got that Pete better than anybody else. That's what I'm saying. No, no, no. I know I get it, but that the song still don't it don't it don't stand the test of time of a great this song. He has better. Joe Budden has way better this songs to other people than that song. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, can I give you sidebar songs that you might have liked from the mob? Can I give you um, Doss Effect song, Microphone Master? Love it. Wait a minute. Here's another sidebar song. Right? It's the P with PMD and Prodigy. Remember that joint? See, this is why I'm telling you how ill everybody wanted Prodigy. Remember, Big wanted Prodigy, too. He just didn't show up to the studio. Everybody wanted to rap with Prodigy. Mm -hmm. Is Method Man not on extortion? That's a fact. Yo, Meth, yo, dog, Meth was on All Eyes on Me, Ready to Die. <laughs> yo, Meth, yo, only besides the bad, he wasn't on there, but Meth been on something like. Well, know? listen, 
Right. Well, not, not only that, but Meth, Meth was on the Belly soundtrack with the song with Nas. Yes. So Meth could be like, yeah, I got songs with Biggie, Nas, Pop. We're like, who who you want me to have a song with? I got songs with him. Right. Young Love, another underground Mob Deep song. So <laughs> now, now you now you go into the Mob Misses, the, the stuff that didn't make the album. Yeah, dog. Now, let me just say this. Right. I always say, did have produced all of those unreleased songs? He did do a lot of them, though. Mm -hmm. Now, it, now, if if that's the case, dog, his production is insane. Because that unreleased J Love stuff that J Love would put out on the Mob Misses, yo, remember the Avery song probably he had? That's <laughs> fire. Yo, wait, remember the song with ACB? M O B B. Yes. Yo, dog, that was in heavy rotation. When I say heavy rotation, M O B B A C D, bumps up, queasy, you with me? Ah, oh, that nigga Rocky was wilding. What about the song with Exhibit in the mall? Eyes may shine, teeth may grit, and all of that. Uh, Classic song. Classic <laughs> song. In a verse, no, it's a shit. Yo, man, God, I was beat with here, man. I well, here's the thing. No, no. Uh, Bun B did the verses. Right, yeah, facts, 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 he did. And what, I've, and what I've been reading is that sometimes he brings, Noid goes out with him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, yo, man, I, I, you know what I told people, just to let y'all know how, how much we appreciate Mob Deep. People were like, yo, the locks, yo, the, can they just beat anybody from New York? And I said, no, they can't beat Mob Deep. Mob Deep got 20 songs that are just, there's nothing the locks can do about it. Yo, listen to me, three, three, three. There's nothing the locks can do about it with a 20 pack. Because here's the thing. We the streets. Okay. Right? Oh, uh, 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 so hold on. Are we saying the locks have nothing that can be shook ones? Are we going there first? Nothing. Oh, I like this talk though. So nothing. Not wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's let's go there since we since we're talking about the greatness of Mob D. Uh, and, and the locks. Let's take a song like Money, Power, and Respect. You think that's better than I for not? No. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, where y'all going? Anywhere y'all go, like, anywhere y'all go on the street level right. to be like, yo, we the streets? The more, yo. Mark D could have an album called We Are the Streets by night, by, by, by after, after um, Hell on Earth. They could have, or after fucking um, The Infamous. They could have, they, they could have named, the, and nobody would have said nothing. They could have named the infamous Hell on Earth and Murder Music We the Streets yes. on all three of those albums. Mm -hmm. And and people get thrown away because Jada Kiss's performance and Jada Kiss's performance is incredible. But if we're just talking about the, the music, Mob Deep has the music. It's only 20 songs. Trust me, they got 20 songs. Because the first five songs of Mob Deep, they give you let's go shook one, survival of the fittest, hell on earth. And they can just go in that bag, dogs. Like, and now we not. Then you fast forward. All right, so ninety six. The gap went from ninety six to what? Murder music dropped in ninety nine, right? Yeah, murder music dropped in ninety nine. So that three year gap, we're, we're, they're still pumping out cool tapes here and there. I think verse. I think P was on um, Cam's album. Losing the way. You know how much I love that song. Right? Snake Eyes was good. You know how much I love that song and everything like that. Yo, buddy, don't do yo. That. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I know you want to go in your back. I know you want to go in that back. Now, again, what you going to say? Yeah, yeah. I mean, now, I'm just like, you really like losing weight part two with Prodigy. I, I know that you really like that. Oh, okay. Now, why are you going to hold you, man? Let me ask you a question. Do you think took Pete? All right, let me go murder music first. So now we go into murder music, dog. Quiet Storm drops. What are you thinking when you first heard Quiet Storm? So I actually prescriptions. What are you thinking about, brother? I heard. I heard. I had. So before before that album came out, Cupmaster C had the original version on um on one of his mixtapes. He had. He just had a stripped down version of Quiet Storm, but it but it wasn't called Quiet Storm. You know how mixtapes used to just get the early stuff first, and he had Prodigy rapping, and it was just a like a demo version. Right. But once I heard that completed version, I mean, come on. 
So here's another thing. So now this is what we're going to give Havoc props. Havoc took White Lines, Ooh. one of the all-time greatest songs from Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. It's like five mic super classic. He took White Lines, and then he flipped it. And here's the thing. I don't know what Havoc did. How about that? Because everybody's like, yo, this guy chopped it up. He built it from scratch, and he sampled this, and he did all that. I don't know what Havoc did, but I know he did something, right. and what he did was ill. You know what I'm saying? And then Prodigy, that's a solo Prodigy banger. What, uh, what were you song? Cool, were you cool with Pico solo and Hav not getting no bars? Were you cool with that? Uh, absolutely, because here's the thing. Hav was the producer. Hav was co-MVP at all times. But, if he wasn't on the song. Well, you and I both know the hip-hop community treats Havoc the way they treat Big Boy from our cast. They'll have Pico. Well, here's the thing. thing. Okay, so let, let me just say this. That is horrific. That is horrible. I, I never, I never for a second ever was elevating one over the other. I looked at them as a group the same way I looked at EPMD. Two ill brothers who got busy together the same way I looked at when Q-Tip and Fife would get busy, when Run and DMC would get busy. Like, I was not elevating like one is so much better. This wasn't a situation where there was... Uh, but watch, you didn't you did, you did hear conversations in the streets that people at one point, maybe 98, 99, after so you want to hear this? They want to hear people I, the project. I never heard that until the internet. Really? Okay. I did not know that that was a conversation. It wasn't until I got into the AOL chat rooms, people would be talking about it. And they'd be like, yo, Prodigy, Prodigy. I'm like, what, what about Prodigy? Uh, Havoc is like, I just didn't know. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to be here to say, man, Havoc has gone ball for all with Prodigy on every song, and there were some songs Havoc had the better verse. That, that happens, man. That, that happened. Fact. And it happened numerous times. Yeah. It wasn't just a one-off. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Prodigy is great because on some of their greatest songs, Prodigy, for example, take a song like Apostle's Warning. Prodigy leaves Earth. Mm -hmm. Like, leaves Earth on Apostle's Warning. Yo, <laughs> this on, it's, what Havoc had with us on the illest? He had a solo drink. That's, that nigga went. That's my, one of my favorite Havoc solo drinks. Period. No, no. So, so with me, I may. You know how I feel about Havoc. I feel. Listen, I think Havoc is the be uh, the best rapping producer combo in hip hop history. And when I say that, people do not like that. Mm. They don't. They can't accept me saying that. But I, I feel that way. Mm. So, what do we think about murder music, my G? <laughs> Mur this is how great murder music was. They tried to do something different, and they still, like, no disrespect. And then just, let me just be clear. I'm not saying no disrespect. The song with 8-Ball and MJG was a different style. We wasn't used to hearing them on that slow but, tempo, whatever but, it was. But to, be, but to Mom's credit, though, they did embrace the, the South Brothers. BG was on Pete's album also. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I take nothing away from it. But right. this was the first time we heard right, 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 right. Southern representation on the album. So it was like, okay, it's different. You know, they had C. Yeah, I would always want to know, they had C's on their album. How did that happen? Like, I always want to know, like, how, you, how did y'all get little C's? No, C's, like, no, C's verse was bad, though. I, well, no, no. No, it wasn't. I just want to know, how did that happen? Like, well, who? City, city relations, you know. Okay. Big bad um, a couple years ago. You know. Okay. You, 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 uh, but I, let me just I, I don't know if bumping C's Leo. <laughs> No, no, no. The wonderful world of Caesar Leo. I don't know if that was the rotation. Come out. Come out. You, you, don't do that. Did, did you get that? Wait a minute. Did you get that album? I did buy it. I ain't gonna hold you. And so, and so did I. Now, I'm gonna be honest. I got my bootleg. But I, but I made sure I had it. Like I, because all the guest appearances. Kiss is on that album. The dog. She's had mad guest appearances on there, dog. <laughs> yeah. Um, but... but, but but back to murder music. Mm. They did something that's basically impossible. Mm. They did it again. They literally, you know... Back to back to back. The last group to do that, to me, mm. was EPMD. Right. Like, EPMD was going back to back, like, like, and it's like, each album just seems ill and ill, and you just, like, you in that run. Mm. Um, murder music has... One of your favorite songs, The Realist. Now, I got that over Eye for an Eye. Let me just throw that out there real quick. I a song over. Yeah, I do. I do. Did you Whoa! Oh, did you hear that jumping out the window? I don't.
No, I don't think it's jumping out the window. I just, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know. So, <laughs> let me ask you, who, who, who are, let's go ahead. Are we, are we both in agreement that G-Rap was the MVP? Yes. All right. Who was the MVP or Alpha Al? We saying Nas or P or Ray? No, no disrespect to have. I'm just out of those three. You going Nas? A drug dealer's dream. Stash cream. Nine hundred and triple B. Five hundred and twelve. Cake. Man, the man. Five hundred and twelve. Fuck just like a gentleman. Tell him a shot. Man, I want a friend. Yo, Nas is wild on there. Okay. Nas is wild on there. I ain't gonna hold you. But look, I say that to say this. I don't think nobody else and I had a better verse than G Rap on the Villas. Okay. I'm I'm I I will not debate I can't I can't I won't think debate that. I will not debate that because G Rap's verse was just that, and, and here's my look on your No face. no no. But here's the thing though, and I'm glad you said that. Because this album came out in 1999, and we're saying G Rap had the basically one of the best verses. And look, look, at, we're talking about from Symphony to that. That's like a 10 year gap, and look how G Rap's rapping. You and know what I'm saying? Can I make the argument in '95? The Mob had one of the best albums in '95. Can I make that argument? In '95? Yeah. Absolutely. Wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. I'll make a better argument. Can I make an argument? Hell on Earth was one of the best albums in '96. Yes. Can I make the argument Murder Music was one of the best albums in 99? I'll make a better argument for you. Murder Music was better than Eminem's first album. I would agree with that. And and, and, and it's not even debatable. Mm. And Eminem's first album, yes, we're talking about Eminem, the Slim Shady LP that had Guilty Conscience, yes. Hi, My Name Is, yes. Brain Damage, mm. Bad Mercy, Bad Mercy, Bad Versus Evil, all of that is on there. Murder Music is a better hip hop album than the Slim Shady LP. And we can go song for song, and then it'll get ugly. It'll get dark for that album. Because once Emma's doing the crazy, zany stuff, we getting into, it's mine. I know people might not like this, and I get this when I say this, but I wasn't a big fan of the Cormega song. Talk, I love that song. See, now, now, <laughs> that song was my joint. Yo, that Cormega song was, that Cormega, that's, that Cormega song was ill. You know how I feel about Cormega. I just don't. Whatever. All right, I'm going to leave it alone. All right, I'm going to... That Cormega song is... First of all, you can't say that because Cormega had one of the best songs on HNIC. HNIC. You thought he did? For real? Uh, He didn't? I like that song too much. No, wait, 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 wait. What, what song are we talking about? We're talking about Prodigy's first solo album. Yeah, I'm, I'm, no, he had a, no, his verse on um Murder Music. Yeah, but I'm talking about his verse oh, with Prodigy on Prodigy on HNIC. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. You might not, we, You know what? I think we're talking about two different songs because you no, might... We not, we, no, we, we, not, nigga, no, 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 no. Yes, we are. No, we yes, not, we are. No, we're talking, about, no, we we're talking about the song produced by Alchemist, right? Yes, <laughs> nigga, yes. Yes. No, see, you said Alchemist. Don't do that, Watts. You're being cute now. The beat, I give you that. The beat, yes. Overall song, all right. This guy got me, like... No, 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 no. That might be the best song on HNIC after Keep It Thorough. Infamous Mike. After Keep It Thorough. The song three. The I name like, of the song is three. I like Diamond more than that. I love Diamond. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Do. You do not. Yes, you're you're three. Three. Yes. There's no way you telling me the song three on HNIC, you like Diamond better than that song. I like the song with Nori more than that. Oh, we talking about the same song. No, I'm, no, I'm really, you know what? I really believe there's a disconnect here, so we're gonna have to figure out what's going on. Because there's no way we will figure. Listen, we're gonna we're gonna walk the block on my HNIC. We're gonna walk on that though. What do you think about the guest appearances though? Other um, we spoke about C's. We spoke about A Ball MJ. Wait, come on, come on, come on, come on, Raekwon. Raekwon on there. That was a dope joint though. That song is crazy, but guess what? Prodigy had to, Prodigy MVP that one. Yeah, he did, he did, he did. Pro, no, Prodigy on that joint. He did. He got he, look, he got you right now. Let me ask you a question. Did Prodigy get Ray on um on nighttime vultures? Yes. Ray, yo, Ray and them got dusted a couple times though. If we gonna keep it up, so. <laughs> nah, 
Nas did lap niggas on verbal intercourse. I'm gonna keep it a hundred. Nas did lap Ray and Ghost on um, I gotta keep it a hundred. I, I love them. I'm just, just being real, man. They they did. They got lap. They didn't get lap. Foxy Foxy, oh. Foxy lap Capone and Nori on Bang Bang, in my opinion. Wait, I'm gonna say this. Now this is gonna jump out the window, sidebar. I think Ghost and Ray went ball for ball with Nas on verbal intercourse. I know people don't want to hear that. And I think y'all don't want to hear it because Nas said from the womb to the tomb. Like the way he ended it was so ill. But Nas I thought Ray and Ghost owned it. He owned that track, man. I would I, I would I would have loved to have been a sponge on the wall, like a, a fly on the wall on that session, just to see Ray and Ghost verse when Nas laced it or when they got it, however it transpired. I just want to see niggas' facial expression when Nas is rapping on that. Well, the one thing we know, the one thing we know is every member of the Wu, I'm not going to say looks up to Nas, but they really treat Nas as, and I'm talking about every member that I've heard talk about Nas, it's in reverence, Rain and Ghost they treat him like... Rain and Ghost especially. RZA. RZA. You got to hear the RZA talk about Nas. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they talk about him like, yeah, he's that dude. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Quiet Storm remix or the original version? Both. 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 What you no, no, no. Both. 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 Because the, the, the remix was... The remix really, really elevated them, man. It did. It did. It did. It did. Even that though, remix really elevated them, man. Especially with Kim. I know we did a Marvel of appreciation, but I like Bang Bang more than Quiet Storm remix. So that's just me, though. I, I don't know. I, I, I disagree, man. I, I disagree. Bang, I disagree. Bang. Sorry, man. Bang Bang was different for me, man. And, and we got the have verse. You wanted to have verse. We got the have verse on the remix. You wanted to have yes. verse. And you got the have verse. Can we kill this myth also? I think you and I did a great job when we speak about, you know, everybody talks about J.D. Kiss never spin one whack bar in the 90s. We also gave credit to um, Sticky Fingers also about that, right? Can I throw Prodigy in there also? Well, it depends. How do you feel about his first album, Juvenile Hell? Okay, well, then that, that, that negates everything. Then if, if you're going in that bag, then that negates What you mean? They, they dropped an album. I didn't like that album. Sorry. Just like I ain't like Tribe album at all. You know what I mean? Yo, I don't like when you say that, man. <laughs> I don't like when you say that. That dog. Yo, I don't even like the fact they named a song called I left my wall in Elsa. No, no, talking about, talking about. I hate when. We, okay. Thought about the title. That I think, I think, I think that is a, I think that is a strong four mic album. I think Tribe's first album is a strong, strong four mic. Be the album bummer, can I kick it? I can rock with, but. Else. Not yo, push it along. Footprints okay. left my wallet. El Segundo dog. Footprints. This album was Stop. serious. I like footprints. I give. I give footprints. I give that. Do that for me. That is, uh, yo, know. by the way, I, I recently saw Sticky say, "I burnt Red Man and Method Man on a song together." He recently said that on 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 Mavs podcast, and I was like, "Sticky, I love you. You bodied every verse you did." I'm here to tell you, I will never rank you over Red Man or Method Man. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. You're never going to be better than Red Man or Method Man. You're never going to be looked at better than them. I agree with you. I don't like the way you say it, though. No, I got to say that. I, the way he said it, he said it like, yo, I already bought it, them. Yo, well, I think them. Dog, Onyx got the, we, oh, we doing a mob of appreciation. They right there with the mob on back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back albums. And not for nothing, they got one, two, and three, where it was like five, four and a half albums. Honestly, you're right. My peeps better than them. I would agree with that. I would, I would agree. No, no, you're saying it like you don't want to say it. My peeps better than them. But that's not for the Onyx, though. We're not going to do that, though. I'm, no, no, no. I'm not pointing on them. I'm not out the window and say Onyx didn't give us three fire albums back to back to back. Onyx gave us three fire oh. albums back to back to back. My peeps better than them. You both like Kirk Jones, the album. What album did you like better, Kirk Jones or HNIC? I see, my nigga. All right, come on, man. Come on. Let's, 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 let
it wasn't as good as the Mob Deep solo. It wasn't as good as the Mob Deep albums. Would no. you agree to that? I would agree. To that. I, would, I would agree. Because I, I, I love P, but do I think H and was a five mic album? No, I don't. No. No, I don't. No, I, I didn't think. I didn't think. I didn't think it was a five mic album. Um, but I think Mob Deep's three album run does not get the credit it deserves in the nineties. I personally think that was the greatest three album run of the nineties. Now people will disagree. People will say Outkast, and that's you're a hundred percent correct if you feel that way. But the Outkast vibe did not hit me the way the Mob Deep vibe. But Mob Deep is literally the soundtrack. Of every day of the nineties for me. I'm thinking you to say Red Man. For you. For you. Just for you. You're right. No, 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 no. No, no, you're right. Because Red Man's three in the in the nineties had the same exact effect on me. It was the same effect. I'm, but I was talking groups. Okay, group. Okay, got you, got you, got you, got you. And group ten mob deep as a group, best three album run. I would agree. Um definitely agree with that. Because if we're talking solo, then you got Cube's three album run. A lot of people got L three album runs in the nineties. What do we think about the um? What's the album they had? With, um, Infamy, Infamy, the I, one after. I, listen, I like the Infamy album. I did not like the one twelve song. I gotta be honest, I did not like the one twelve song at all. I understand what they were going in when I interviewed Havoc. He told me that you know they got they got good change, money wise, financial backings off that song, but they didn't like that song. But that album was got that whole Jay Z clapping all day though. And I enjoyed it. I ain't gonna lie to you, much. I love hope. Um, I love the infamy. I love okay, I love the infamy. I love when Prodigy was going at Hove. I love the production. My gas spitting. No. Like this was an ill album. Real talk, though. I think people see on the if you talk about production, the infamy production is phenomenal. Production. I'm gonna tell you what hurts the infamous. It literally came out infamy after takeover. Infamy, infamy. It literally came out after takeover and i remember people was trying to front on the mall after takeover i, think, I remember that as much as i love hope i didn't jack just because jay-z had summer jam screens i didn't stop playing mob deep or looked at p differently or dog i liked the p more than nas at one time yeah i said it so y'all people thought easy what up i did like p more than nas so when hope did a summer jam screen i didn't look at that prodigy or oh, you whack now or I can't, the infamous don't sound the same anymore. Or I can't, I can't I, no, I was never in that bad, never. But you know what's crazy about that? Prodigy thought that. He actually said, I didn't know how the fans would, would treat us after Jay-Z dissed us. Yeah, there were some people out there flaky, though, you, like you said. No I, no, I know that. And that's why when people tried to front on the infamy album, I'm like, dogs, our infamy album was, no, strong, strong four mics, close to four and a half. I, 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 I definitely agree with you on that. Definitely. Like, come on, man. If we, when we, you know what's crazy? If we ever review that album and we go song for song, dog, it's going, we going to really find out, like, yo, this album was crazy. You know what? I think if we do Infamy, mm -hmm. it's going to make us feel when we revisited B and we was like, yo, word. Everything was crazy on B. Right. I think Infamy is going to hit us the same way. Mm -hmm. And, dogs, I like it. Like, I'm glad we have, we talked about Infamy because I feel people don't speak about that album because they don't revere it there with, okay. If you want to say that's not sitting at the table with Infamous, Hell on Earth, or Murder Music Watch, I, I would agree with that. Cool. If you want to go in that bag, but it was still a dope album to me. Yo, dog, when you got Infamy, right? Mm. Did you? You didn't feel any kind of way, right? No, you I wasn't, um, you didn't feel like let down. You no. didn't feel like, yo, this ain't it. No. I, I got the Infamy and I played it and loved it. Like, I didn't feel no let down at all. And then and when, after that, free agents. Which I love a lot. In a lot. What up, sir? In a lot. I love that project, dog. Love, love um free agents. I'ma just say this, man, so people don't understand. Prodigy and Havoc and Mob Deep are two uh, are one of the greatest, if not one of the greatest groups in hip hop history. Right. For whatever the reason is, they don't get talked about like that. Mm -hmm. But me and three here to tell y'all from living being outside in the nineties as grown men. Mob Deep's music is pivotal. It is the essential, most important aspect of New York hip hop during that time. Because they were the only ones in the 90s who did not go commercial. I'm talking about the 90s. They didn't go commercial. They didn't sell out. They wasn't trying to do no funny stuff. They kept that strictly raw gutter rap. And they, they made Queensbridge sound like it was the illest place on the planet because people out of New York City 
when they equate New York City, the first thing they think is Queensbridge in the 90s. Because I'm out of all, even though P's from Hempstead, I'm gonna make sure I give Hempstead they love him now, okay, you know what I mean? But, you know, they really put Queensbridge on the map. Like MC Shane, Roxanne Shane, I get it. But Nas, of course. But I think Mob. Wait, you are, you, let's keep it real. Who do you think did a better job representing Queensbridge? Mob or Nas? Mob D. Same here. Mob, Mob D. D. I'm going Mob. 41st side convention. <laughs> Queens rapping. The bridge rapping. Get the hand in you Were we the only ones that bought that 41st side album? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yo. 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 <laughs> I don't know. I Listen, I bought the album. I, listen, I love P so much. I love the Albert Einstein album. One of my favorite solo P albums. No, but I still support it. When, when people no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You went, you went free agent. You said you really liked the free agent love album, it. right? My G, love that free agent. Now, nah, wait a minute. What you thought about American Nightmare album? I, oh, oh, no, is that G Unit era? No, it's before the G Unit. It's the joint where they had Twisted. That song Twisted. With Little John and all that. I, with little yeah. John. yeah, yeah. And they had the song with Twister. I was like, strong three to have teetering for. Four mics. <laughs> that's not a three and a half mic. That's a four. Yo, dog. So you got to say something. Mob Deep never, they never failed with me. Nah. When Mob Deep put out an album, at minimum, mm -hmm. it's four mics. And it just depends on where I'm going with it. I, I really enjoyed America's Nightmare. The song America's Nightmare. Damn. That's, that's, a, that's a sinister song. I always talk about this. When 50 Cent was outside doing his shenanigans on these, on these New York streets in Queens, outside Jamaica, Queens, you cannot tell me the Mob Deep albums, the tapes, part of it, the tapes, was not a soundtrack of his life when he was outside doing what he was doing. That's why, it was easy. I, that's why I feel it was easy for 50 to sign a mob. Now, let me say something that really upset me, and it bothered me. I used to get into deep debates when people was hating on Mob Deep signing with G-Unit. I didn't, yeah, I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that. I didn't, that I didn't. Yo, do you let me tell you, do you know what was the happiest moment for me? Watching P and have it get that money. Yeah. When I used to when I used to watch Prodigy with that bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what it is? I think people took umbrage or they like the fact they got the G in the right there. I, I know people in the all hip hop dot com, the real my man. Fifty made fifty fifty paid them for what they deserved, for all of that, for what they contributed. Reparations. <laughs> word, word. For what they accomplished right. and what they did. And he knew how much it impacted them. Yeah, yeah. He made yeah. sure. Oh, top. And by the way, 50 loved him, dog. You know how much unreleased music he did with Prodigy? He could, yo, yo you notice when he brought Prodigy on and Mob Deep, he focused on them immediately. Sorry, Hot Rod. No disrespect to you, MOP. No disrespect to MOP. He, do that, do that, do that. No, no, no. Listen, <laughs> when he, so, he, they solely focused on Mob Deep, and he went hard for Mob Deep. Sidebar, man. I thought MOP got the they, they got the show under the stick. No, yeah, they did. When they were Rockefeller, Jay Z and Dave was breaking up when they was oh. talking with them, and then when they got the G Unit, it, it didn't pan out. It was just but no. But you know, you, you know what's great about that? What's great about that? It really shows people how much people loved M.O.P. and how, mu how much they were respected right. by their rap peers. Because you let people today tell it. Yo, no disrespect, man, to younger people out here, man. <laughs> I don't want to come off as the grumpy old man, but wh where's the mob deep of today? Lobby boys? Is the lobby boys the mob deep of today? You tell me. Some 40 you tell me. Some 40 old niggas talking about they the lobby boys. Jim Jones, you ain't got a lobby boy. Like, you live in Jersey. What lobby boys? They say, yo, dog, you should be naming some lobby boys when y'all was in Harlem and everything, when, when Dipset was out like, popping. And I like Mano. He's cool, but I was never the biggest Mano fan. You know, I know he got to do his little, you know, he'd be on his um wallow bag, try to be righteous and shit like that. But fuck out of here with that lobby boy shit. I don't hear that shit, man. The beats are fire because they sampled a lot of old school Beats that we can't. Yeah, what the hell? Okay, sidebar. Because I, I, I went through the lobby boys. What you thought about when they sampled ice cream? We appreciate it because that's we that's we was outside, right? But dog, listen, the production is fire. I get the production is fire. I like the beats, but 
That's all they did. I don't want to hear forty old niggas talking about they lobby boys. I nigga, you a lobby boy? Niggas chill in the lobby anymore? Is that still the move? That's eighty ninety. Talk to me, the lobby. Is the lobby the hot spot now? So outside of New York City, what? Uh, I don't live in the lobby, brother. So I, 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 I'm the wrong person to ask, man. Yo, you need to ask some lobby boys, man. The lobby boys, man. Yeah, that's just not my. Opinion. No, so, so let me ask you this now. What was your thoughts on Blood Money, the G Unit debut album? I did like, I, I did like the, I did like the project. I did like it. It was great. It was cool. How many mics? Definitely three and a half. So three and four. Four. I, 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 I give it. I give it. Dog, I am not gonna let four. you. I am not gonna let you get that. That okay, man. Dog, you know how I have my mics, man. I can't. I, it's like it, it's cool. I liked it. Listen, every song was in fire to me. Pearly Gates, we had Pearly Gates, the first thing I like. Uh, you know what I mean? I liked it. Yo, dogs. I played that Blood Money. I, first of all, you don't understand. I was. I felt like I was. I was G Unit during that era. <laughs> so when you were like. Dog, dude. You're, you're, you're ride and die, Gene, and, when, and then you get Mob, my favorite group, one of my favorite groups of the '90s on there. I it couldn't go wrong. Uh, that was a that was a strong four mic album to me, man. Strong four mic album to me. That Blood Money album. Strong four. Strong four. Nah, nah, nah. Th no, I'm just saying this. Way off though. Three and a half, brother, is not. I don't like that. I don't like that. I liked it, though, but you can just see the, the transformation from, you know, and I, obviously they're not doing grimy ish like that no more, but, you know, I, I love Pearl. I will, I, I love I will give you this. I will give you this. Definitely P was not in prime P bag. Right. Because, you know, no, you're right about that. Be honest, I put P on voice box alone in, in, in terms of his voice stands out with Rock Kim, Chuck D. You know what I mean? Like those brothers. You know what I'm saying? Like those brothers' voices stood out to me. P's voice. You know what I mean? Don't, I like P more than Nas than one time. I know people hate when I say that. But yes, I did like Prodigy more than Nas. And shame on you for Nas. Nas, you went all these years not doing a full album with Havoc. You want to go a hit boy? And you don't do an album with Havoc? Styles P does a prop. Get out of here, Nas. Get out of here with that. I mean, think about this. Havoc is about to come out with an album with RJ Payne and Ross Cons. And I want to work a hit boy. Have, Havoc, Havoc is available to work clearly, and I don't know. I don't know what people are doing, man. Because, I, I, like I said, I personally have Havoc over Dilla, and and no one can convince me otherwise. You can't convince me otherwise. Why is Dilla the measuring stick, though, brother? <laughs> because people consider because people consider him the greatest. They consider him the greatest. People always Buster Rhymes said he's the greatest of all time. I was to say that, yeah, I seen that. Right. Um, Return of the Mac album. Was you or your fan of that album? My piece. Um. Yes. Yes. So, so, so the thing about Prodigy was, <sighs> Prodigy is one of the rare MCs that Prodigy didn't have it. I bought all their solo projects, and I bought the uh, the 2014 album they came out with. The infamous mob, they called the infamous mob. I was happy to get that. Remember they had that song with Mob D? I mean, they had the song with the locks. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I, what, I, the the mob tree though. Were you a big fan of God? What, what, what is the brother's name? Godfather of three and the mother. Three? Yeah, yes, I was the infamous mob. Yes, I was absolutely. No, 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 no. Not yeah. Mike DeLorean and Bars yeah. and Hook. Were you a fan of Littles? Yo, yo, I love Littles. <laughs> yo, yo, Littles is my god. Yo, let me tell you, Littles used to do songs with tragedy. Yo, man, I love them little tragedy I'll songs, man. Trash. I'll give you trash. I'm not giving you. No, 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 no. First of all, no, I'm saying when, when Littles, I like Littles, man. Twins, Yo. Twins and all them. No, 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 no. I like them, man. I'm a big fan of Big Noid. I, I, I think Noid, Big Noid. Noid is proud. I give Noid his just due. But I think Big Noid is an unofficial third member. I like, I like, I like Big Twin. I like, um, uh, I, I like I like the mob affiliates, man. I like the mob. Affiliates. The only ones that I'm not into, I wasn't into bars and hooks, and I wasn't into Mike Delorme. That's it. You wasn't into bars and hooks, though. We going diamond. I like going diamond. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I told you. Yo. I did like that though. Let me ask you a question. 
How much did it hurt Pete about his book, though? When he wrote his book, though? His book hurt a lot of people's feelings, man. It really did. I mean, I didn't realize the backlash, but, man, that was a serious backlash to that book, man. Like, a lot of people said the book wasn't true. A lot of people in there, ref like, 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 I did not realize that book was really going to upset a lot of people, and it did. It upset people so much that, um, you know, people are now telling me, yo, Stop saying prodigies from Queensbridge. He's from Long Island. Like uh, people are telling me this now. Like I'm getting, I'm getting that kind of talk where they like, yo, you, you keep saying he's from Queensbridge. He's from Long Island. Yeah. I'm like, okay, so this is a new talking point now. That's what we doing. And I don't, I don't know if you remember this, but one of our early shows when P's mural got um take messed up, and you and I did a show about that. Which one? His mural. P's mural. When he yeah, yeah, and, and wait, and it kept getting messed up. Yeah, it kept getting messed. That was crazy. That was crazy, man. That was crazy, man. Yeah, man. Infamous Marv, Marv Deep, man. That's just, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I remember when Pete passed away after we did our first Marv Deep appreciation. He passed away two weeks after that, man. That was like, yo, that one, that one. And let me tell you, let me tell you what, what, what hurts me so much about Pete's passing. As Griselda blew up, mm -hmm. right? And Flea Lord getting props, there would have been a renewed, we're gonna give. Ma Prodigy and Mob Deep a second look about their greatness, and I believe they would be getting crazy flowers in this era, in this generation. Everybody would be just like, yo, we got the legendary Mob Deep in the book. Like, like they would be revered. Like, people would be treating them like this is an all-time, all-time group. And then, you know, Griselda dudes, they would have just been like, yo, these are the illest dudes, yeah. you know, ever. Right. Somebody said infamous mob or Braveheart. I'm going infamous mob. Come on, man. That's not the time out, time out. That's infamous mob by a million, right, man. Right. Even your bodyguard verse is better than yours, man. Listen, I, I listen. I mean, you could you could choose a cat like Todd or Black Child. I would have kind of made a yo. Oh yeah, you're right, right. I was about to quote. I was about to quote one of your favorite Jay Z disses. What's that? What's that? And your little homie jungle, he's a garden to me. You see? Garden <laughs> <laughs> to me. Garden appreciation, man. Shout out to the mom, though, man.